Keeping our expanding smart cities on the move is a top priority for governments and local authorities around the world, and it's no easy task. Mass transit systems not only provide the signage, the information technology and guidance for passengers, they also run the software, the data and video surveillance systems to make it all work. I'm Andrew Wilson and I'm in Davos to talk to Luminator Technology Group about the challenge of designing and maintaining these systems for customers in 85 countries around the world. Franz and Kirk, thanks very much indeed for joining us. It's good to talk to you. First of all, give us an idea about Luminator, what you do and how big your footprint is around the world. Luminator is in the uh, mass transit business and uh, we have uh, really three divisions. One is an aircraft, one is bus and one is rail. And what we provide is passenger information systems. We do business in over 85 countries with uh, offices in 13 uh, countries and over a thousand people. So as a member of the public, how might I experience or interact with Illuminator technology? Well, you would see us in a lot of different ways. So uh, if you came here, you, you probably either took a plane, train, or a, a bus to get here. And uh, our passenger information equipment was most likely involved in that journey. So like with Franz in uh, the European business, you would see in Switzerland and Zurich, you'd see a lot of different um, destination signs and things. Yeah, and especially in Germany or in Europe, I would say we, we do a lot of stationary signs. That means when you arrive at the airports, when you arrive at the stations with a train, you got the first impression about what's going on, where I am, what is the next departure time, and all these signs uh, are delivered by us, are designed by us, and are set with the right software, software by us. A member of the public would think, oh, well, the aircraft companies must take care of their signage and the rail companies must take care of their signage. And, and we immediately assume it's sourced to the city that we're in. But actually, this is a lengthy business of cooperation and design for each individual client that needs a specific need, isn't it? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, some of the underlying technology is obviously the same, but cities have their own uh, destination requirements, certainly by name, but also frequency and route and the way they want to display information. So our German clients uh, use different standards than U.S. clients and Swedish clients, and it all kind of adds up to be really what they perceive as the best solution to give their transit public. But it's not just a display, is it? You have to kind of tie into the, the demands of how they want to move the numbers of people, and it's all got to, to work in tandem with the, the movement plan, I guess. Uh, that's true and that's, uh, that's very important and within Europe there are different standards, different ways of doing it. Uh, though with some customers, the customer is doing it independently and we just have the components. In others we are somehow networked with their back-end offices, with, uh, with their buses, with their, uh, with their route planners and all this stuff connected to the data suppliers who are sending the data to the buses or to the signs. So it's really different from, from city to city or from administration to administration. And what's interesting is when people travel, they go on holiday, they go on business, one of the first things they comment on is how easy it was to move around that particular city. Oh, well, the transport system is very good. Oh, well, the buses were very clear. So that means there must be an element of competitiveness involved in how these cities, ambition, how these cities want to operate. You're exactly right. And they're collaborative in nature, the trans transit authorities work together and there's a supplier base of us that work with them to provide those services, but they do want to have great transit. So like when you checked in here at Davos, they gave you a bus pass and all of the transit is available to you for free. And that's part of the city, right? They want to have good transit. So this is a cooperation with us, with other suppliers, with data suppliers, with the manufacturers of the vehicles and with the suppliers for the, let's say, surveillance systems or information systems of the cities itself. I guess also there's an element of Phoenix wanting things to be just a little bit smoother than San Diego so they can show what a, a great city they are. That's correctly uh, right. Each city would like to be smarter and more modern than the other ones. Yeah. Uh, so this is especially in Asia. So there's a huge um, competition in between Shanghai or Hong Kong or Hong Kong and Singapore or in the Middle East in between Riyadh and Dubai or Abu Dhabi. And even in Germany, where we, have, where we have Hamburg or you have Munich, you have Berlin, each of these cities would like to have the best information systems, the most attractive pub public transport, and it would like to be the most modern city. And passenger information uh, is a very important part of it. That puts a lot of pressure on you guys. You've got a, a line of mayors outside your office all saying, make us the best. <laughs> It does put some pressure, but you know, again, we're part of that supplier base and we work very hard as uh, you know, you're from the UK and London has a specific image they want to portray. And 
working through that and making sure that we provide the best solution we can to, to be part of that is, is an important part of what we do. So for London, we want our red buses to be as slick as they can be, but make them look old fashioned and quaint. That's exactly right. So that sign in, in a London bus, a destination sign is actually very different than an LED sign, but it delivers the same functionality to the bus, but in a different way so that they can have better uh, sighting for disabled peoples, as well as that image that they're really, really proud of. Okay, back to the technology then. Data, hugely important. Everything runs on data now. It's directing the flow, it's organizing safety, it's making sure that things run on time and don't crash into each other. You must have a, a huge role in that now. You must have to link into all that data. Well, you're right, and data is the backbone of all of it, but part of our job is to help the transit authorities take all that data and turn it into information, making it accessible to you as a traveler, but also to the planners and the operators of the transit authority so they're in a position to make better decisions to help you as travelers. So camera systems, using those maybe as a capacity loading. Do you have a bus that's fully loaded and should put another one on route or train or other device? So turning all that data into uh, information is part of what we help the transport authorities do. Final thought then, France, let's start with you. Our cities are getting bigger. There's all sorts of challenges coming down the pike as far as how we manage those safely in terms of resources as well as moving people around. What do you see the challenges being for a company like Luminator Group? What I see or how I see it, uh, the cities do not become bigger, unfortunately. They're just more people in the cities. That means the surface starts to become limited. Uh, therefore, we need to, uh, or the cities, uh, somehow need to rearrange uh, the transport uh, and for my feelings, the transport will be rearranged in a way that they get out the private cars from the cities and uh, that they are working with uh, buses or smaller buses in future, maybe autonomous driving, uh, driven buses, which will just transport the people through the center of the cities uh, in future. If you're a traveler in a city, you know that congestion is going up, transport time is going up. So we, we are working very hard in that smart city initiative, both providing better guidance for walkers and pedestrians and connecting them to alternative methods of transport, including bus and rail, and working with transport authorities to do that. I mean, briefly, are you looking down the line, looking ahead of what the cities are looking at? Are you trying to come up with ideas, waiting for their questions? Sure, of course. We're, we, we like to think that we're, we're working on things and providing ideas to our, to our customers about things that we're doing. That's uh, obviously a, a big part of our business is to provide future solutions, integrating autonomous vehicles if you think about it today, the bus driver is the information uh, provider and the management of the vehicle. So if you take the bus driver out, there's a host of management activity that now has to happen on an autonomous vehicle because it's a public vehicle. Providing those kind of systems and safety and other parts of it, it's exactly what we're working on. Okay, Franz, thanks very much indeed. Good talking to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.